What up, party people? My name is Matt Lehman. I am the owner of SpatulaCityRecords.com, and this is my new series, Controversial Album Covers. This is episode number one. And we are sponsored by... Spatula City Records, yes! It's a direct reference to UHF the movie. So when you talk about controversial album covers, there are basically five main categories that, that encompass all of controversial album covers. They are religious. Now, everybody knows a religious zealot loves a good fight and they love to find Satan and the demons and stuff. So we're going to get into those. Those are pretty cool. Uh, sex and nudity is your second category. And this is by far the largest category of the five. And that encompasses subliminal penises, subliminal vaginas, boobs, uh, nipples, butt cracks, uh, underage sex, underage nudity, all that stuff falls under that category. And that is just a massive broad category. Violence is the third category, and this one I'm kind of having, having issues with because there's a couple album covers in here that I'm not sure I want to put on my on my uh, TikTok or my Instagram feed. Um, I'm still thinking about it. I have them, and I'm holding them, and I'm just kind of like, uh, maybe I'll blur them, but uh, they have some interesting stories, so I might have to do them. We'll see how, but that's going to be way later on down the road. Uh, number four is my favorite category, copyright infringements. In fact, one of my favorite album covers is in copyright infringements, uh, and it just means that they didn't secure the rights for the images that they used. And the last quarter category is decency, and that can encompass a lot of different things, and this verse certainly falls under the decency category. Now, this is Mamas and Papas, If You Believe Your Eyes and Ears. It was debuted, it's their debut album, and it was released in February of 1966. Um, the reason that you have to talk about this is because, in my opinion, this is probably the first album that had real controversy around it. Um, later on that year, in June of 66, the Beatles released the Butcher cover, but they pulled it for yesterday's and today's, and that's the mama or granddaddy of all controversial album covers, which will be coming on later down the pike. But the reason you have to talk about this is, like I said, this is the first one. Um, this is the one that caused issues. And what caused the issues? Bink, bink, bink. The Toiletta down here in the corner. And in 1966, this was a horrible, horrible thing to talk about, let alone show it on an album cover. You didn't talk about poo-poos. Uh, and you certainly didn't talk about toilets. So record distributors threatened to not distribute this record and because they found it distasteful and they thought it was completely indecent to show a toilet on a cover. Uh, which caused a problem for Lou Adler, the producer, because if you can't get your album distributed, you're not gonna sell a whole lot of albums. Uh, but he was a smart man and he was a wise man and he kind of grasped the idea that, well, you know, controversy isn't such a horrible thing, let's see what happens. So instead of pulling the entire album, they did pull the album, but instead of actually shooting a new cover for it, all he did was put a sticker down on the, on the bottom. But when he put the sticker down on the bottom, he didn't cover the whole toilet. He left just a little bit of the toilet right there. And because of that, it caused more controversy, but they let it slide. And there are, off the top of my head, at least five versions of this jacket. You have the toilet cover, the original toilet cover. You have the uh, sticker over this, but the sticker is just a straight black sticker. There's nothing on it. There's another one that has two tracks on it. I think it's Monday, Monday, and I call your name. And then this one, which has three tracks on it. And then after the sticker, when it was when they reissued it, it had uh, airbrush, which is this one is airbrush. It's not a sticker, it's airbrush. And then there's also a black band cover. Not band like in band in the United States, but band as in it's been banned all the way around. It's a black band all the way around this, and all you can see is their faces. Uh, that one, I believe, is the rarest outside the toilet. Uh, and the toilet one is pretty valuable. This is a reissue, so it's, it's 20 bucks. But... Uh, the original one will get you a couple hundred bucks if you have it with the toilet. Uh, I don't know of anybody trying to peel the sticker. I'm sure there's probably some people that have peeled the sticker, but I don't know if it's akin to the amount of numbers of the Beatles butcher cover. But um, so who knows? But it is argued that because this was their debut album, that the controversy actually helped them sell a, a, a quite a few more records. And I think that's arguable in almost anybody's cases. Take whether it's a Appetite for Destruction, which is one of the largest albums around, um, that cover kind of probably helped propel them a little bit because they got airplay from it. That's free advertising. As uh, P.T. Barnum said, there's no such thing as bad press. Well, if the press is talking about your horrible cover, I want to see the cover. What's it look like? And then maybe I'm going to go buy it. So yeah, it certainly helps them out. Um, the other problem with this cover is if you look, it's Mama's apostrophe S, Papa apostrophe S. 
that is not how they spell their name and, and it is the mamas and papas no apostrophe and this is the only album they kind of screwed that up and they've never replaced it obviously like i said this is a reissue they never fixed that but if you look at the rest of their album covers it's actually the mamas and papas no apostrophe uh the artist or photographer that did this cover his name was guy webster he was unknown at this at this stage of the game he had done one album or 145 for a surf rock band and in a chance meeting with Lou Adler, the producer of this album, uh, Adler liked him and said, hey, go get a picture of these guys for my album cover. I, I need a cover for him, so go get a picture. And he set this up, and they kind of were screwing around, and there's rumors of marijuana. Like, supposedly there's marijuana in her hand down here. Uh, you can't see her hand because it's under her legs, but she's holding uh, aluminum foil full of, of pot and some joints. But regardless, uh, once this came out with the controversy of the toilet, he exploded and was now a hugely in-demand photographer and his ended up uh, catapulting his career for uh, into 50 year category or 50 year career uh, that spanned and included some of rock and roll's royalty uh, his album covers over the year include um, Simon and Garfunkel Sound of Silence Rolling Stones Big Hits and Aftermath uh, the Doors self-titled album Captain Beefheart has one by him Tim Buckley Carol King and the list goes on and on and on not even to mention the countless magazine articles and all the photographers that he has he died in 2019 um, but he is uh, photography royalty for sure so this album certainly begs the question is does controversy sell records most likely I think it's arguably that it does and I think you'll see as we go down the road a lot of these bands really uh, helped their career by by doing something like this by doing something controversial and getting religious zealots or whomever to go after them uh, and we'll see as we continue down the road. Thank you so much for watching this episode. As always, SpatulaCityRecords.com has buy nine, get one free, free shipping on orders of $50 or more, and all of our records are ultrasonically cleaned. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Later.